So some of our antibiotics have been discovered from other organisms, fungi, bacteria. Why do they make these things? Yeah, that's, well, that's a, a good and Is it for ex us? Extreme, well, no, not for us, yeah, unfortunately, although we've made great use of it. Um, no, I mean, microbes live in dense, diverse, extremely competitive communities. And in those communities, a great way to survive and persist is to make, you know, uh, toxins that take down your competitors. So we're back to chemical warfare again. We are. It's How long warfare. has that been going on? Um, billions of years, presumably. Billions. Yeah, by, by inference, certainly. H have they discovered every possible antibiotic <laughs> in the process, do you think? Uh, wow, that's a good question. I mean, no, no, not, not technically. I mean, a lot of what we do now is we'll take, we'll find an antibiotic uh, made by an, an organism, and then what people will do is they'll vary it, they'll do a lot of chemistry, and they'll vary different uh, 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 positions uh, on the molecule and see how that affects its activity, and also the effects on us, right? Some antibiotics are poisonous for us, and so it can make sense for us to modify them so that they're not poisonous for us, but they still kill bacteria. So certainly, um, the, the, the microbes have generated this vast array of different antibiotics, but we will often vary them on top of that to maybe improve them slightly for our purposes. Mm -hmm. So does your thinking about how the bacteria cooperate and how natural selection has worked with these warfare things lead you to any new suggestions about how we might identify new antibiotics that we haven't found yet? Um, yes, I, yeah, I mean, there's definitely one key prediction that, that from, my, from my work and I think other people have thought of as well is that, well, if we know that bacteria tend to upregulate their antibiotics when they're faced with a competitor, you know, they turn on their we weapons of war when under attack, then in order to, un to identify new antibiotics, we want to start growing them with their competitors. And indeed, mm -hmm. that's what you see. If you grow a Streptomyces bacterium, which is one of the key soil bacteria we get a lot of our antibiotics from, if you grow one of those guys uh, with another species of Streptomyces, they suddenly turn on all of these chemicals and it make all these new chemicals. Uh, streptomycin, it does make streptomycin, exactly, yeah. Streptomycin can be, is manufactured uh, in the absence of uh, uh, other species, but they, they will make a whole load of new molecules if you put them in the presence of another, huh. another, another species. And so a key prediction of, of the sort of evolutionary approach is that um, these guys will use their weapons when in the presence of a competitor. So if we want to discover all the antibiotics out there, we want to start looking at them in their communities. So don't treat them nicely, put them under attack and yeah. see how they respond. That's right. So can a particular species um, create different antibiotics in response to attacks by different kinds of other bacteria? I, that's an excellent question. I think the answer must be yes, but I don't think we understand well enough the full You said before it's, it's mostly you know, damage. Yeah, um, that's right. But if they can detect specifics. Yeah, so I, I, I don't doubt that the regulation of the different antibiotic systems that they carry will, uh, will be different in some contexts and presumably explained by who might be attacking them. But we don't understand yet. I mean, the reason why I think that must be the case is uh, species like Pseudomonas aeruginosa that I study has a whole range of different weapons. It has weapons to stab, which are poisonous. It has weapons to punch holes. It has regular toxins. It seems to also use biological warfare. So it has all these different ways and of attacking. And this is a really bad one for human lungs, especially with people it with is. cystic fibrosis. It's exactly. Real serious clinical problem. That's right. So its ability to cause disease is matched by its ability as a microbial competitor. It's a really very, very intensively, intensely competing strain that makes all these so weapons. So this suggests that you could make your Pseudomonas infection less nasty if you killed off the other bacteria that it's competing with. Uh, maybe over evolutionary time that might work. I mean, I well, if, if if there aren't other bacteria in the culture in the lung, right then, mm -hmm. right, then they wouldn't be stimulated to be so nasty. Maybe, although the nastiness tends to be directed towards the other bacteria, which may be a good thing. Um, I mean, I think in general, in, in a in a mixed uh, polymicrobial infection, you know, with multiple strains and species, if they're fighting each other, most of the time that can be a good thing because they're gonna they're they're focusing on each other, not on you. Um, however, I think undermining their ability to compete in that environment might be a way to go. If we can inhibit their weaponry and shut down their ability to kill other bacteria, that might actually allow those bacteria which are potentially less pathogenic to take over. And so these are the kind of things we're exploring. You know, can we find the Achilles heels of these bugs, their ability mm -hmm. to invade a community, their ability to persist by understanding how they interact and compete with other bacteria? That's fascinating.